Hi, good morning and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this new webinar. Uh, my name is Jean Jérôme, and I'm with the Cyber Alliance team. We're presenting this, um, this uh, meeting today, and I'll be looking after you for the next um, 60 minutes or so um, of the time of this, uh, of this webinar. Uh, as you might have noticed from the invitation emails and the communications we've done, um, today's webinar is, um, takes a little bit longer than our usual ones. Uh, it's part of a three of a trilogy, so there's three parts to this webinar. This is part two, um, so maybe you had the opportunity to participate in part one, uh, and if not, you know there is a replay of it, so you can always um, watch that again. But um, this is part two, and it's a series where we take a little bit longer because there's a lot of content. It's uh, it's quite dense, um, so a lot of content for you today. So be prepared for about you know a good 60 minutes of uh, of content. I hope. Um, I hope you've prepared for that, and uh, as always, we'll have questions uh, at the end of the webinar um, that we can um, answer for you um, if you have any in the meantime. Uh, and on that note, you can ask your questions in the question section of your control panel, uh, which you should see um, on your screen, and uh, you can also contact us on the, in the chat box of your control panel, uh, so feel free to use either to, uh, to ask us questions about uh, today's content, or if you have any technical issues, feel free to contact me there as well. And uh, if if you'd like to continue the conversation after the webinar or have uh, you know further questions, feel free to email me at jj at severalnines.com and uh, I'll be sure to uh, answer your questions there or you know put you in touch with my the relevant colleagues uh, in, on our team. Um, so this was just for some of the logistics for today. Um, the session is being recorded as well, so if you would like to watch the replay of it, uh, we'll make it available in the next uh, couple of days so you can you can watch the information again at your at your own leisure. But for now, we're live uh, to talk about um, MySQL query tuning. Um, and before we do this, I just want to give you a quick introduction to Several Nines and uh, our product cluster control. Uh, we are a company that um, develops and um, uh, um, a platform, a solution called Cluster Control, that um, is all about um, automation and management of open source uh, databases that goes from deployment to monitoring uh, through to management and scaling. There is a community version of Class Control that you can use to deploy and uh, monitor your open source databases um, for free. And then there is um, a paid version that includes management and uh, scaling features, which you can test for 30 days once you start um, uh, the community version of Class Control. It comes with an initial 30 days of uh, all of the enterprise features of the product. And you can see some of those features um, listed out here, especially on the management side. There's some pretty cool features there around database upgrades, backups, cloning, you know, scaling, and so on. So if you haven't tried it out yet, we, uh, we invite you to do so by um, going to severalnines.com. Uh, we support uh, all of you know, the, the most popular data open source databases um, uh, that are out there today, from MySQL to MongoDB and uh, Postgres, of course. And um, some of our users you can see on the, on the next slide uh, you know that range from uh, telecommunications to um, entertainment to public sector research and so on. Uh, so a lot of different types of users, and maybe you might be one of them uh, already. Um, and like I said, if you haven't tried class control yet, feel free to go to sevenlines.com and check us out there. But for now, the topic for today is MySQL query tuning, indexing, and explain. Uh, my colleague Christoph is going to um, cover that topic um, for us today. Um, he's also doing you know, the, the first part, and we'll do the third part as well. So it's the trilogy that I mentioned earlier. And uh, to kick things off, we wanted to ask uh, all of you in the audience today uh, a question. And this is to find out um, which version of MySQL you're currently using yourselves. Um, it's a multi-answer question, so you, you, know, you might have uh, more than one version that you're working with at the moment, whether it's 5.5 or earlier or you know, some of the more recent versions. And maybe you're using MariaDB as well, so we've got, um, we've got that included here too. So it'd be great to get your feedback and see um, uh, what the mix of um, MySQL usage is um, within our audience today. I'll give us a few more seconds for everyone to participate. Thanks very much. Great, I close this now and uh, share the results. Excellent, very nice. So this is pretty even. So there's um, an even split between, you know, as you can see, my square per corner server 5.6 and 5.7, and same for the different MariaDB versions. That's nice to see. And it's all pretty evened out. Um, we, we had this session already earlier today for. Um, uh, for um, our users and um, uh, friends from uh, from Europe, you know, it was a bit earlier, 
Um, the, the split was a slightly different there, so this is quite even um, this afternoon or this morning, depending on where we are. Uh, any any comments on this, Christoph, before you take over? Yeah, I mean, it's it's really nice to see, you know, more and more users running or already running 5.7. That's, uh, that, that's really reassuring that people are willing to upgrade and benefit from the latest software. Um, so the content-wise, like 99% of the content will be applicable to, to every um, MySQL, MariaDB version out there. Um, there will be a couple of, um, there, there will be one or two uh, things that I will mention that will be um, somewhat related to either 5.6 or uh, 5.7. But, but I, I hope that all of you will benefit from, uh, from this whole um, our conversation here. Great, thanks, Christoph. And uh, with that, I'll hand over to you. Okay, so thank you, JJ. So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Christoph Kionzek, and as JJ mentioned, uh, today we'll be discussing. Um, yeah, we'll be having a like, second installment of uh, of our webinar trilogy, and we'll be talking about indexing and explain. So, um, so basically, uh, in the previous part of this uh, webinar, we uh, we discussed queries, we discussed the collection of the slow queries, we discussed the, how you can process uh, slow queries and to, you know, to, to, to understand them and to aggregate them and to make some, um, you know, some, some information out of them. Um, and today we will like move a little bit further because now we want to uh, we, we want to discuss some things about uh, query execution plan and the indexes, which are the basic the building blocks of the performance in uh, relational databases. So uh, we will start by talking about indexes. So uh, we will cover the battery index, how it actually works. Um, battery index, as you may all know, it's basically the D index in MySQL. Um, we will also cover differences between uh, indexes, between indexes in MyISM and InnoDB. Um, probably most of you are already on InnoDB, but it's good to have this comparison, um, a comparison uh, with the, with this older uh, storage engine, which is also can be used somewhere. Um, and then B3 is not the only index out there, so we will cover a little bit of uh, other some other uh, types of indexes which are available uh, in MySQL. Uh, then we will move to uh, we will move to explain. Mm, so that's a tool which gives you the insight into query execution plan. So I'm going to go uh, and perform some overview of it. Go through some column, some some information that presents it to you. Um, along with the extended explain, so this additional information you can uh, get from explain. Um, namely, explain partitions, explain extended, and explain JSON. Um, so that's that's about it, and let's get started with some theory about indexes. So um, I, I want to start with a little bit of theory because, um, in my understanding, uh, to you know, the, the, to be able to use a tool like index in my uh, in a database. Uh, and to, to be able to use it wisely, you have to understand uh, the very basics of how it functions. Because um, only when you understand those lower parts of the, 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 the internals, uh, you can actually make some informed decisions about uh, whether to, to do something or not. Um, whether to take some action or create an index or, or maybe skip it or, or, or whatever. So. Um, so we will start a little bit of theory, um, but first, you know, the the in general, MySQL uses multiple index types. So we will be focusing on B3 um, and B3 plus two indexes, uh, which are probably, I mean, something you you understand as an index in MySQL, um, and in MySQL both are called uh, B3 index. Um, so these indexes are used by my eyes on InnoDB and memory storage engines. Um, then we have uh, full text indexes. Uh, they are also they can be used by my eyes and InnoDB. 
uh, in ODB starting from 5.7, MySQL um, 5.7, uh, sorry, 5.6. Um, and then we have, uh, and those indexes are intended to speed up some query, I mean, some, some queries regarding to relate to um, text data, like searching for to, uh, text uh, data type. Uh, we have a spatial indexes, which are uh, again uh, available in my ISON and in ODB. And this time, uh, in, in, in ODB, they were introduced in 5.7. Um, and they're related to the geometri geometrical data. Mm. And also we have hash index, uh, which is um, by user can be used only in a memory uh, storage engine. Um, so yes, that's that, that, that these are the indexes. And as I said, we'll be focusing on the B3 index um, and B plus three because that's what we are like 99% of the time we are working with in my uh, in my SQL. So okay, so let's let let's take a look uh, step 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 um, stay for a moment and let's take a look at how the between index is designed. So um in this uh, in this chart you have you can see um a very simple example of an index uh, covering very you know a couple of rows. So what we have is basically we have a, a root node which contains some values, uh, some and, and there are there are links to different leaf pages, so-called leaf pages. Um, the root node can be full or there can be some empty space in it to accommodate some more data, um, and then every leaf page um, and I will stop here because what I want to make clear here is that what I will be discussing right now uh, is the index, how it works in uh, my ASM. Uh, and that's, with InnoDB, things are very, very similar. There are some important differences which I'll be covering later on. Uh, but for now, let's keep in mind this is more or less how, uh, how things work in my ASM. Um, but again, as I said, 90 percent is the is the same. So we have leaf nodes, uh, uh, leaf pages here. So we have the exact data, and also to the entries like, of the index, some some values stored here, and then for the, each value of the of, of this index, we have a pointer to some data to. Um, to, to, to a pointer to a row in a table space. Um, each leaf page contains a link, so again, a pointer to a subsequent leaf page. So, uh, so, so I can go from here and start scanning uh, another leaf page. Uh, and again, there, it can contain some free space to, to accommodate some more data, or it can be full. Um, how things work. So uh, in the root node, we have those three values, 5, 11, and 23. Uh, and, and then we have four links to different uh, leaf pages. So basically, the first link will cover the uh, all those values, uh, which are basically uh, low, less than five, not including. So, if I want to look for a value of one or two, I'm going here, and I can, I can find some data. I can find the value of two. I can find a pointer to a place to location in the, um, in the uh, um, table space, and I can retrieve my row to, and then, and then do whatever whatever I want with it. Another another uh, link just covers uh, the uh, values starting from five up to but not including eleven. So here is the sleeve page. Another link covers starting from eleven up to not including twenty three. And then finally we have values starting from twenty three and above. So that's more or less how uh, how things are organized and how we can find. 
um, the the exact exact value of some. Oh, I mean the data data related to some value of uh, from the index. Uh, so as I can as I said, we can perform a you know nice uh, uh, lookups. So let's say I'm looking for a row uh, with a value of nine. Uh, then I want to I, I'm I'm looking for the leaf page uh, containing values starting from five up to not including eleven. I'm going here. I'm finding the value of nine. I'm reading the, uh, the, the, the I'm checking the pointer. I'm following the pointer to some location in the table space. I'm reading the row and I'm fine. I'm good with it. Um, but also, um, but also, what can what the index can be used for uh, is um, range scans. So let's say that I want to. Uh, I'm looking for uh, values between, including two and maybe eleven. So, what will happen is that I'm uh, I'm checking um, the value of two, which obviously is low, uh, less than five. So I'm following this uh, um, to this leaf page. I'm finding the data. I'm finding the value. I'm reading the data. I'm moving forward. And another value three matches my condition. I'm reading the data. Another uh, another data. Uh, I mean uh, another uh, value. Matching my condition, I'm reading the data, and now I have this pretty important little bit. Uh, so I have a link to another leaf page. Yes, so I can follow there. Reading the data, five matches condition. Read, uh, checking the value matches condition. Reading data, checking matches condition. Reading data, checking nine also matches condition. Reading data. There is no more. Data. In, there's no more and in, in index entries in this leaf page, so I'm switching to to the third um, third leaf page. I'm reading eleven matches condition, and um, I can retrieve my data. So as you can see, not only I can perform um, efficient index lookups, but I I can also very efficient efficiently perform an index scan, um, some range scan um, uh, of the index. So that's basically a summary of what I uh, what I covered. And so we have in our example we have a root node and four leaf pages. Uh, so each each leaf page has a pointer uh, to, um, to 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 a row related to this index entry. Each leaf page has a pointer to the beginning of another leaf uh, leaf page, which allows us to perform, uh, as I showed an example. Uh, uh, Allows us to perform efficient uh, range queries, um, and of course the index lookups are also pretty efficient and pretty pretty quick. Um, but that's about uh, that's about uh, reading the data. So let's think about let, let's check how things work when we try to insert the data, and let's insert a row with index value of twenty. So I'll scroll back to. Um, so this initial uh, chart. So the value of twenty of twenty will obviously is located between eleven and up to not including twenty three. Yes. So we are going to insert it into this particular leaf page. And luckily, it contains some space, so I can just basically insert the value of twenty. Point so you know insert you know, create a pointer to some you know, like location in the table space where the row is located, and um, yeah that's that's about it. We are all set, yes, and that's exactly how things are looking here. So we have we 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 entered we we followed this to this leaf node uh, leaf page and we entered the value here, yes. So if there is some free space in the um, uh, in the uh, in the leaf page, then inserting is pretty quick, pretty efficient. It's just adding some data. Um, okay, so let's then insert a row with value of fifty. So now things are slightly more complex. Um, obviously, value of fifty will be Located in uh, like, uh, in the leaf page containing the values starting from 23 and upwards. Um, 
So that's the, this particular uh, if page. And as you can see, it is filled. So there's no, no empty space here. So what has to happen is we have to split it in half. For example, what we can do is like we can split in two sections, uh, two, two leaf pages. One will contain uh, values starting from 23 up to not including 80. And, uh, and the other one will contain values starting from 80 upwards. So what you have to do is we have to create two leaf pages. Each of them will have like two slots free, uh, two, 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 some, some space for two, two more entries. Uh, and of course, we have to update also our root node because, because we have to set, set up a, you know, a link to this, um, to this new uh, leaf page. So we'll have, we'll enter here a value of 80 and it will basically link to this another to this new uh, leaf page and then after the split we can we have some free, free space in the in the leaf page covering 22 up to not including 80 so we can insert a value of 50 there and basically that's that's how things look look like so we we split we split the, um, the leaf page we had to create an entry in the uh, root node uh, pointing to to this uh, to this leaf page containing values starting from 80 and upwards um, and we inserted the value of 50 into the leaf page covering data from 23 up to not equal decade so now as you can see things uh, became more complex so one single entry uh, one single insert uh, created a couple of index op uh, operations so we had to create a new a new page. We had to uh, move some data um, to this leaf page. We had to either remove the data. You know, we, we had to remove some data from this uh, original uh, leaf page, uh, and, and we had to modify uh, the root node to to accommodate for the new leaf page that is that has we have created. And then finally, we we could insert a value. So as you can see, one single insert operation and resulted in um, a lot of maintenance that had to be done in order to, to accommodate um, this new value in the in an index. Um, and then let's imagine that, yeah, and, and here's basically um, the situation before and after the split, yes before we inserted the value of 50 and after. So as you can see, a couple of things has changed here, right? So there, so there is some, um, some, some operations had to be made. So obviously splitting a leaf node is, uh, requires several rights to happen. And that's no, um, there's not much we can do about it. Um, and then the problem is that at some point we may end up having to split a root node. So uh, let's, because right now, as you can see here, right, our root node is full, right? So uh, if let's say we insert a value of maybe, um, maybe 21 and then 22, um, we can insert the first value because we have some, we have some space here. But if we would like then to insert a value of twenty two, uh, we would have to again perform a uh, leaf page split, and then we will not be able to accommodate it within the uh, within our root node. So root node will also have to be split. I mean, the basically the, the new content of the root node will have to be created, and then new level of leaf pages will have to be created, which will be linked further down uh, to, to the leaf, leaf pages. So, um, so basically, this would create even more operations in the background to perform an insert. Um, so, so basically, the whole point of, of this 
this this in introduction, this is just theoretical introduction, is that you understand the fact that um, you know adding the data to the index is more co expensive than just you know inserting a row because sometimes it is okay if you have some free space in the leaf page, but most at some point you will have to perform some additional operations, and that's where things have become messy. I mean, th there is an overhead, there is some additional operation that has to be performed. So, uh, so, 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 so that while indexes are obviously great uh, to to sp speeding up reads, um, they also slow down the write operations. Because uh, you know you have to you have to perform some of those operations, and if you have multiple indexes, you have to maintain every single one of them. Uh, so uh, yes, so that's definitely um, some sort of uh, some sort of, uh, of of management of overhead that you have to accept. So, so basically, the summary of, of of all the slides is that more indexes are not always better, and you have to and you have to make uh, wise decisions uh, whether the index is really needed or not. Uh, you, what you should also do is to perform some, uh, you know, to to implement the process of going through your schemas and uh, looking for you know, unused indexes or duplicated indexes. Because every duplicated index is an index which actually may not be, I mean, it's not needed. And uh, if it's not needed, then it's just, you know, wasting your CPUs and IO cycles. So that's the uh, same like with the index which is not used. And again, this is something which basically just adds an overhead without, you know, helping you somehow. And actually, there are a couple of tools, you know. Um, there are tools that will help you to find those uh, the stuff like for example you can find unused indexes in using performance schema or you can find some uh, or Percona has some tools for that like uh, PT Duplicate Key Checker uh, for example and also if you're using uh, Cluster Control we also have um, a feature um, a tool which helps you to find redundant indexes uh, and also, uh, and also a tool which helps you to find some uh, unus unused indexes, which can be probably because not, of course not always, but there, there is a possibility that, that such index can be removed, and uh, and in that way you just reduce the overhead. Um, so, um, so, so as I said, what what I just covered is more or less the how things work in my ISO. Uh, and then let's take a look how things are different in in ODB. So in general, there the are two types, quote unquote, types of indexes. So we have a primary key, uh, which is obviously always unique, and we have secondary indexes, which may or may not be unique depending on how you define them. And uh, in my eyes, some primary key and secondary indexes will look exactly the same way. They will look exactly the way I, I just showed you. Um, so, so they basically contain the pointers to to, to the data. Um, so you perform an index lookup, you start from the root node, you go through the levels of leaf pages, and then you find the, 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 the value that you're looking for. You find this uh, pointer to, to a table space, you go there, you retrieve the row. And in ODB, it is this final step is organized slightly different way, and uh, actually it can be uh, huge if you if, if you'll be able to play towards this you know, towards the strengths of this uh, of this design, uh, and you use them to, to 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 so you can benefit from 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 the uh, from this feature. Um, what I'm talking here is that what I'm talking about here is the fact that in InnoDB um, the primary key is a clustered index. So uh, basically, instead of a pointer 
to a row like we had in my ISM. Uh, in InnoDB, primary key contains the full row. Um, so as you can imagine, this will speed up the significantly speed up primary key lookups because you in, in my ISM, as I said, you, you just root node, levels of leaf pages, then you find the value, then you find the pointer to a table space, then you go to the table space and retrieve the row. In NodeDB, you start from the root node, follow the levels of uh, leaf pages, uh, you find the value, and then you basically, finding the value, you have a full, uh, full row entry. So you, there's no need for this additional lookup uh, into table space to, to retrieve the data. Um, so basically, in in the DB primary key uh, structures the whole table. So because it, it it builds the whole table because it contains the uh, these rows, and that's that's one of the reasons why you you have to have an index the primary key uh, the primary index in uh, in the InnoDB table. So even if you don't create it explicitly, then my my SM, uh, my SQL will try to first use some unique index and the unique index that you may create it. And if it couldn't find it, it will create a, a, some like a generic cluster a clustered index uh, that is created implicitly. So there's always always a primary key in, in a DB table because otherwise there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a table uh, at all. So that's uh, that's a good part. And then there is a problem. Um, so so then, then we have a secondary indexes in, in a DB uh, which are managed a little in a different way. Uh, and this is actually something which could be, um, could slow down your, uh, your, your queries. Uh, because technically, in my ISM, again, the secondary indexes will work the same like primary key, so we, they contain the pointers to data. Uh, in InnoDB, uh, secondary index will contain a primary key value. Um, so basically, you just start from the root node again, you follow the levels of leaf, no leaf pages, you find the value, and then instead of pointer, you just see... Um, so, so the primary key of a row of a row which contains this value is something, and that's enough because then you can perform a primary key lookup and using this primary key value, and then you can retrieve the row. But you have to perform this primary key lookup. So instead of one index lookup, you perform two. So it is uh, it's less less efficient than um, and then in my eyes. Um, so, uh, additional thing you have to keep in mind that the secondary index contain primary key values. So, logically thinking, if the primary key is long, let's say you created a primary key over some kind of varchar mm, column, uh, which is long, yes, then um, the primary, then the secondary indexes will have to contain this primary key. And they will also grow in size, which makes them more clumsy, makes them less efficient. They will make them use more space on disk in memory. Um, so it may affect, affect the, uh, the performance. And that's why we tend to what, prefer small auto increment uh, integer type of indexes of the primary keys in, in ODB, because that's the most efficient. Uh, way of of building the primary key. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about different types of in the most popular um, types of indexes in uh, MySQL. So uh, first of all, battery, which we kind of covered a little bit, but now uh, let's let, let's. Uh, Add some some more information here about it. So obviously, battery indexes can speed up queries which match a full volume. Uh, so when I run a select something from a table where column equal to one to three, uh, I can I can use index on the column to retrieve the data. Um, 
index can cover multiple columns. Yes, so uh, an index can uh, uh, so-called composite index can be can can be built on uh, multiple columns. So in our case, in our example, we have a index on three columns: column one, two, and three. And such index can be used by queries uh, with matching leftmost prefix. So what I mean by it, by that is that if I have a query uh, which is um, which is using um, which has like the where condition of uh, column one equal to something and column two equal to something else, such query can use this col this this index because the leftmost prefix prefix contains values of, uh, for column one and column two. And actually, this is from my experience. Um, this is the pretty common misunderstanding uh, that that people don't see it, and uh, and you see indexes on column one, column two, column three, index on column one, column two, and then finally index on column one. And uh, like ninety nine percent of the time those two indexes on column one, column two, and on column one, they are not needed. Um, so, and of course, this particular query, so let's select something from table where column one equal to whatever, also can be used here, because can, can use this index, because again, column one forms the leftmost prefix. Um, there is, uh, there might be some reasons just to, to create a duplicated, duplicated index here. Um, the reasons could be that if you create an index on the column one, it will be smaller than the index on those three. So, it, so, so sometimes it might happen that it will it will be a better idea to create a, a new index. But like as I said, like ninety nine percent of the time, it will probably be as good as uh, with having called only this particular index. And just to make the, the sure that things are clear, if we have a query, uh, select something from table where column one equal to one, two, three, four, and column three equal to something else, this query also can use this index, but uh, but the index lookup would be only performed on the column one because column one and column three they 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 don't um, you know inform the leftmost prefix only column one. Okay, so then um, index can also work with the leftmost prefix, uh, leftmost part of the column. Yes, so I don't have to match one, two, three, four exactly. I can match one wildcard. So this particular query can also benefit from uh, from index on the column one or this composite index that we have here. Um, and between indexes can also be used for range queries. Yes, so we can. Um, and again, we don't doesn't have to be you know, they don't have to be exact values. It can be um, it can be also uh, um, white carded uh, white carded queries. So um, so this particular query select star from table where column one rather than one white card and column one lower than three white card four white card. Uh, this will work. And this will this will be able to use uh, index in column one. Um, so um, leave notes mm, in the between index contain pointers to the rows or in my ISM or primary key values in uh, in a DB. Um, but they also contain the data for the indexed column itself. So um, and this is something which can be used to. Uh, to, to, to create covering indexes. I will scroll a little bit um, back to our indexes so we can see uh, maybe here is slightly larger. So basically here we have index on a single column, yes? But if I had index on, let's say two columns, column one, column two, uh, basically here I would have values for both columns. So I would have, for example, one comma ten maybe. Yes, here two comma twenty three. Um, so so both both values will be stored 
in our index entry. And um, uh, yes, so and, and, and that's basically allows you to create a covering index. A covering index is an index which doesn't have to perform a lookup into the table space to satisfy the condition. So, so let's say that we have column one and column two cover, right? Index uh, covering this, those two columns, uh, composite index on them. So then we have a query, select column one, column two from table one, where column one equal to one to three. And as I said earlier, like we, the, the, the entry for, the, for this index will look like, for example, one to three comma 50. So it will contain the data for the column one, one to three, and some data for the column two, 50. Yes, for example. And as you can see, that's enough for us to satisfy this query because what we are looking for is the value for column one and column two. And that's basically what we have in our index. So we don't have to retrieve the uh, row, no matter if we are performing, then if we are looking, uh, doing a lookup to the table space in my system, or we are performing a primary key lookup in the um, in ODB, we are good to go just by reading this uh, uh, this index entry. That's about it. Okay, so the another kind of common index is uh, is full text index in my in, in my school. A type of index that can be used for uh, text lookups. Um, and those indexes that they don't work by comparing values, it's more like keyword searching. Um, full text indexes are available in uh, MyISM and in ODB. It, in in, in ODB they were added in 5.6. Um, you, you, you are using, if you want to use uh, a full, full text index, you don't use where condition, you uh, should be using match against operator. Um, and uh, eventually, what is uh, so you can create both full text and battery index on the same column. And sometimes it make it can make a you know a sense because uh, basically the uh, full text index is is used just to uh, read the data, you know, to find some uh, text in the string, for example, in the varchar column or in the text uh, in the text column. Uh, while you may still want to perform, let's say, a RAM search, uh, a RAM scan on the uh, on this column, so you can benefit from the battery index there. And from my experience, um, I, mean, I, I haven't used uh, full, index, full text indexes in, in a DB more really. Um, in my ISOM, they were not the fastest. So in general, the full text search in my my school wasn't the fastest uh, possible. It might work well for small tables. For large ones, it, it just started to slow down. Um, so people tend to you know stick to some dedicated uh, full text search engines like Sphinx, Solar, or or Lucem, uh instead of, of doing it in, uh, within MySQL. But at some point, it is helpful. Uh, hash indexes. So I think, uh, so hash indexes, the user controlled hash indexes are used only in memory, uh, storage engine, and they can be used for only for the exact lookups. So I, I'm saying user controlled because um, technically InnoDB uses hash indexes as a part of the adaptive uh, hash index. Um, but this is not manageable by user. So just in ODB, create some hash indexes on some uh, set of the data, uh, which it, where, where it decides it could be you know, uh, beneficial to, to, to create it. So the hash index works by creating a hash, obviously. Uh, so basically, you have uh, some column, you, you're indexing column, and every indexed value of this column uh, is somewhat, you know, is calculated, is hashed, basically. Mm, and, uh, and then it's used for lookups. So, um, 
So basically, let's say that we have some value in, uh, in our column one, two, three, and this value hashed uh, has um, gives us the one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, the hash value of one, two, three, four, five, six. So then basically the data will be stored in index as a hash value and then pointer to the row format. So, so when I'm looking for, uh, I, I'm performing a lookup, I'm working I'm select star from table where column one equal to one to three. This value of one to three will be hashed. Uh, the hash is one two three four five six. So then there is there's this lookup for every entries with the hash value of one two three four five six, and then the row pointers are retrieved. Uh, hash index most likely will be smaller than battery, so it somewhat makes it makes it little slightly faster. And it will be faster as long as there will be not too many collisions. Uh, so the thing is that um, so, so, so there are a couple of problems. Like the first of all, uh, there can be. I mean, it's just a hash, so there could be collisions. Like multiple values can produce the same hash, theoretically speaking. And actually, it happens pretty common um, when 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 we are talking about some larger tables. Um, so basically, instead of uh, so, so I, let's say my value of one to three produce a hash of one to three four five six, but also value f value of two hundred, let's say it produce a hash of one two three four five six. So then at the end, when I perform a index lookup, I'm I'm, I'm getting like two or three or ten entries uh, with uh, with a hash of one two three four five six. And then I still have to retrieve those rows and check whether each of them contain a value of one to three or a value of 200 or maybe some other value which is also in collision with, with those two. Um, so index can be used only for direct lookups because of the way how the hash works. You just have to hash the value and then find the pointer to the row. So it can be used for range queries. Um, because there's no way to, to scan it. Uh, and also composite index on, uh, composite hash index can can be used only to locate the data for those particular hashed columns, uh, the, the columns that, was, that the index was created for. Because the hash is created on those two concatenated, so, so let's say that, so concatenated values of those columns. So there's no way to to, to uh, use just the index for the part of the call. Um, okay, so uh, you know we, we're coming to an end when it comes to the indexes. So I'd like to share a couple of uh, gotchas, a couple of things that I found pretty problematic and pretty common, commonly misunderstood uh, um, in my in my practice. Um, so for example. When you are working with indexes, make sure that you, uh, you you do not use functions on the left side of the word clause. So, where if we are using, having an index on column two, then um, and if you running like where some function on the column two, this won't be able to use the index. Uh, if you could um, switch the um, the function to the right hand side, that would that would be better because that would work. So, um, so that's that's the, that's one thing. Um, you should not mix data types, or if you are mixing the data types, you shouldn't be expecting indexes to work correctly. So, let's say that we have a select star from table where var varchar column equal to one, two, three, four, five, and as you can see, and this is, or, or maybe you don't see, because that's probably the reason why this is a problem. Um, we are comparing varchar column with integer, so there are two different types of, uh, of data, and this this type of query won't be able to benefit from the index on this varchar column. Um, you would have to basically explicitly cover the integer to a string by quoting it. So the the query below, like select from table where varchar column equal to quote one two three four five unquote, yes. This this call um, this this query would be able to use an uh, index. Also, what is important when working with uh, with string types, 
uh, and indexes is that um, that the uh, collations can also impact the way how indexes work. So if you have uh, if you're trying to let's say join different columns, I mean join two tables on columns, and those columns are using different collations, this may not work. Uh, this may not be able to to use an index, for example. Okay, so uh, we will going to uh, to talk about explain in a moment, but first uh, I'll hand over to JJ for a poll uh, for you guys. Yeah, thanks, Christoph. Uh, thanks, and uh, it's really on topic since um, the question is also on indexes, and it's to find out whether you currently yourselves use a process to periodically check for unused indexes. Uh, so it'd be great to get your feedback here. No, maybe you don't, maybe you don't, um, and uh, if you don't, you might be thinking about, impl about implementing one, which would be interesting to um, uh, to see as well. So I give this a few seconds to give everyone a chance to um, participate. And uh, just to remind you also that uh, you can ask uh, questions about today's content at any moment um, by using the question section of your control panel. So if you see anything that you're not quite clear on or you would like some more uh, details about, feel free to ask the question in um, uh, in the question section of your control panel, and we'll, we'll answer them towards the end of the webinar. Um, but for now, thanks for your participation here. I'm just going to close this now and share the results. Um, okay, so it looks like the vast majority of you um, don't currently have a process uh, to check for unused indexes, but um, some of you are also thinking about implementing one. Um, I know Christoph had a few uh, recommendations around, um, around um, having such a process, right? Yeah, exactly. So, as I said, it is not a very complex. So there are tools um, like Cluster Control, but even if you don't use Cluster Control, there is a performance schema which can be used uh, to, to to find the um, unused indexes. There are tools from Percona which can be used, and definitely, I mean, it's how I can stress it more than uh, unused index or duplicated index is basically um, most of the time it's index which is. Um, basically, making your um, database slower a little bit, a very very tiny bit, but but you know with with all those indexes, it just adds up and and could become a problem at some point. Cool, um, cool. Thanks, Christoph, and thanks everyone for your participation here. I close this now and hand uh, back over to you, Christoph. Okay, thank you, JJ. So let's uh, let's talk about the explain. Um, obviously, explain is a command in MySQL which gives you an option to check the query execution plan. Um, and um, and basically here, what you can see is a simple example of an explain command, and it's all output. Um, so I'm going to cover some of those fields in detail in a later slides. But uh, what we have here is that we have a simple select. I mean, there's no join here. Um, in terms of um, in terms of joining multiple tables, um, the table is rental, so uh, obviously uh, type that basically means that we'll be using um, a regular index to, to for, for lookup, but I will cover this uh, later. On uh, we have a list of possible keys which can be used. I mean, which optimizer the thing that can be used. Um, for this particular query. And then we have a key which was chosen for this particular query to, to use uh, on a column rental date. Um, we have a key line which tells us how large part of the index uh, we are going to use. Um, this is somewhat useful when, I mean, it's some, you can use it to determine which part of the composite index index covering multiple columns uh, you are using. It's not very user-friendly, but but you, you can use that. And there is um, and, and there is a better way in MySQL 5.7, which I'll be uh, discussing later on. So then here we have that information that also I'll be talking, it, talking about it slightly later, but uh, basically we have information that we are referring we, we, we are checking the rows based on the constant. We are looking for the rows based on the constant, uh, which is basically a fixed date. We have information about 
estimated number of rows that will be accessed by this query. And finally, we have some additional information. In this particular case, it just means that there is um, there is uh, uh, there will be index scan. Uh, sorry, the the covering index will be used to uh, this particular uh, to cover this particular query. And what is important to keep in mind that this is an estimate. So um, this is based on some prediction. It's not exact exact execution of the query uh, and on how exactly the query was executed uh, so it's just um, it's just a prediction based on statistics index statistics some you know DB stats and um, especially the, the this this part there the rows part this can I, I have seen queries and explains which were completely out of um, you know, the completely the other opposite of the reality. So um, technically, it may happen that it's not. And this is not really um, showing you the the real deal. Um, I yes, yeah, so um, there will be. Uh, I don't, frankly, I, I don't recall if there's if there is in five point seven or there will be in eight point zero, but uh, at least there will be an option to run a explain against a uh, running thread to see the exact query execution uh, plan. But yeah, at least, but I, I, I forget whether, uh, which, which version it will be implemented or was implemented. That's, so sorry for that. But there will be, there will be an option for that, uh, in, at least in the future. So the type column, uh, basically it's type of a join. And uh, even though there's a single Query here in my school, everything is a join because that's how how internally it executes the uh, the other queries. So uh, it it can contain a couple of values like equal ref means that the rows will be accessed using an index and one row will be uh, read from the table for each combination of rows from the previous tables. This basically means that uh, we are we'll be using either primary key or unique key uh, for this query. <coughs> a ref multiple rows can be accessed for a given value. So we are using standard non-unique index to retrieve the rows. Uh, index merge. So it will mean it means that rows are accessed through the index merge algorithm uh, and the multiple indexes will be used to uh, locate matching rows. Uh, range. Range means that there will, so, so the, some rows from a given range will be uh, accessed. And index is being used to, to, to identify those rows. So somewhat of range, range scan on the index. Index means that there is a full text index scan that is performed on the, on the index. So for example, uh, it could be a, it could be a covering, covering index or can be, uh, or the index can be used to, to, to sort the output. The index can be used for a, uh, order by, for example. Um, and that's why that's why the full index scan is performed. Or we can have a type all, which means that full table scan is performed, which is obviously very very bad. Uh, so as I said, the possible uh, keys and key just tells us about indexes which could be um, chosen and which are, cho are likely to be chosen uh, for this particular query. Um, Actually, in the next uh, part of this uh, uh, this webinar trilogy, we will be talking about how to impact uh, the way the how, how to influence optimizer to pick the indexes that we want. Um, so, so if you're interested, then feel free to register. Uh, KeyLen, as I said, just tells about the length of the index that will be used by the query, and uh, and the ref column tells us which columns or constants are compared in, to the to the index yes so in our case we are we are, we have the basically a, a constant value but for example if we are joining then uh, we can we can compare a value of one column to some other column uh, so uh, yeah so so then you will see um, the, the information about to which column we are comparing uh, our our uh, our values 
And also we can see a, a func, which means that the, we are comparing a result of some function. Uh, rows, as I said, gives us estimate about number of rows that we scan by the query. Um, and extra print some additional information about some how how query is going to be executed. So it can be like using index in our case, which means that there will be a recovery index used for the query. For using file sort means that there is some additional paths will be used to to retrieve the data in a in a sort of order. It can be information about the temporary table that is created, or can be um, information about some other uh, nested loop or joins or whatever some algorithms that are optimizations that are used for the particular query. Um, so explain on uh, join uh, is slightly more complex. So um, it's more, I mean, it's more output of it. Um, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but on the right hand side, we have, uh, we have a explain executed on the, on the join of two of three tables. And we have the output. So we have indeed the three tables in the in the query. So uh, optimizer started with the table alias as A, which is the uh, actor, uh, which is the actor uh, table. Um, and it used IDX actor last name to, uh, to, to retrieve the data from it. Um, so as you can see, the ref is const, constant because we are uh, we are basically comparing it to the constant value here. Then we have a column. Uh, then we have a table fa alias as fa, which is a film actor. Um, this column, this table is. I mean, we, we are going to use primary key there, um, and we are the referent. The referent column uh, is the uh, column. It's like in a database in the A alias table and actor ID. So we are talking about actor, actor ID column. And that's obviously true because uh, we have it here. Yes, we have a join on a theme actor, actor ID equal to actor, actor ID. Um, and finally, we have a third. We have a third table um, alias as F, which is a film. And then again, we have uh, we are using primary key, and the reference column is film actor film ID, which is in line with uh, the uh, film ID, uh, film film ID, and film actor film ID joint that we have here. And actually, what is important, what is interesting, that when you can see, we have a table uh, actor film actor film, while what we join is we have a film film actor actor so the join order is different optimizer decided it will it's better to uh, reorder the um, reorder the uh, the query the, the tables and again we in the next in the next uh, part we are going to show you how how you can manipulate with this and impact uh, influence the optimizer to, to make things different uh, so in general query, pro query execution plan looks nicely and optimal we we are scanning one times one times one, which means one one row only, which is obviously really great. And, uh, and if we are here, like we, we are, you know, multiplying it here, uh, it is important to keep in mind that you have to have joins really well indexed, because um, let's say we have one hundred uh, rows to to scan on every single table here. Then we would have 100 times 100 times 100, and that's a lot of rows to to scan. So it is important that when joins are not indexed properly, it and you are joining multiple tables, it is very easy to um, for the amount of rows to examine to to skyrocket and slow down the system to MySQL to crawl. So this is something you you have to keep in mind while working with joins. Explain partitions. So um, let's say that you are working with a partition table. Uh, then uh, you can benefit from some additional inter information about uh, when while running explain partitions command. 
So, but basically what is added here is the new column partitions was added to the explain output. And it contains the information about partitions which are going to be accessed by the query. So uh, basically what happened is that based on the uh, where clause and based on the index that is covering the partitioned uh, column, um, optimizer determines that decides that only those three partitions, partition 10, 11, and 12, are needed to be scanned to, to actually uh, to, 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 to satisfy this query. So there's no need to scan every single partition out there, just three of uh, those three, which is obviously great because um, we are minimizing the number of, of data data uh, that will be scanned. Uh, and, and this is so-called partition pronic, uh, if you're interested in digging further. Um, explain extended. So if you are interested in how exactly MySQL executes a query, then explain extended is for you. As you as you saw uh, in the example before, uh, it, it actually can rewrite some change some orders of the table, so on and so forth. But it also can add some additional optimizations in the query. Um, so if you want to see how things are working exactly, then you should you have to run the explain extended, and then follow it by show warnings. And it's very tiny text here, but here at the bottom of the right hand side is basically the uh, the output, the exact output of the command of the query that will be executed by the MySQL. So there are a couple of things added here. For example, uh, there's information about that there's the in optimizer kicked in. So we had uh, we had a sub query in, in clause. So we have a select some column, 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 and gender in some subquery. Uh, so, so optimizer decided to do to, to something about it. Basically, what happened is that uh, the query is subquery is not dependent, it, so it it was materialized as a temporary table, and and, and then some other. So basically, this is uh, there's some operations happened. To this to this query to, to to make it more optimal, make it faster, basically. Most of the time you won't need this, but it may happen at some point that you you are interested in a very detailed way how particular query is going to be executed. So you just have to keep in mind this uh, this command that can be useful. Then. Explain JSON. So in the uh, MySQL five point seven, uh, the explain can print the output. In the JSON format, uh, that wouldn't be a very, very like great feature. Um, but the thing is that it not only changes the format, but some additional information is added. So, for example, there is additional information about uh, parts of the composite index that were used in the query. Um, so here we can see that we have uh, information about the possible keys, key primary. The primary key was chosen, and then used key parts, uh, employee number. So we can see that um, only a part of this composite primary key uh, was used to for, for the lookup. Yes, it is much much user more user friendly than well um, just calculating those bits or the bytes. So how many? Bytes are needed to store primary uh, to store the big integer, then the varchar column, and then something else. Because that's way how you that's that's how you work with max uh, with the key length. Right now you just have the information, which is which is very useful. Also, some more information are um, um, stored about subqueries. Yeah, so if we have information that you know the so that table was uh, temporary tables were was created by materialized, materialized, materialized query. Um, then we have, you know, the, the, there was, you know, so the temporary table was, was used, uh, the subquery is dependent. So all of this uh, bit of information are out there. Yeah, useful basically for, so, so you can, uh, you can understand the, uh, uh, the, the, the query execution plan better. Um, so again, right? While this, you know, human eyes are not really 
designed to parse JSON, uh, it is still fine because you can you can somewhat go through this uh, format through this output and find this additional data and find this useful data. So still, we are, we are pretty really nice that um, Oracle decided to add this stuff. Um, basic, basically, this JSON format was created just so that MySQL Workbench, workbench could uh, create nice visual explains. Uh, but well, you know, we we still can benefit from that. Um, so we we I'm, I'm kind of closing this topic. Uh, so I would like to add one more thing: is that um, keep in mind, you know, what, what I covered here is just uh, you know, a tip of an iceberg. So if we are talking about the explain, uh, feel free to to get familiar with MySQL documentation because there are a lot of other stuff which I didn't have time to cover. Uh, so yeah, we are, I really recommend to at least once in your life to go through the MySQL documentation about the explain because that's the most well, most popular tool, the command that we are running as DBS probably. Um, so um, yeah, so so there are a couple of uh, blog posts that we we had and they are covering the same the, the more or less. The, the same material that we covered here, so feel free to to take a look at them, and maybe you you'll find some some more data, some more information. Uh, if you're interested in our next part of uh, of this uh, webinar trilogy, then go ahead and feel free to register. Uh, the webinar will happen uh, towards the end of the October. Um, and before we will take questions, then I would like to you know, hand over to JJ for uh, for the final poll. Of the day. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Christoph. Um, yeah, and so just before we um, we get to answering some of the questions you've been asking, uh, we just want to ask all of you um, uh, one last question. That's around you know um, which tools you might be using to analyze query execution plans. Uh, so whether it's PT Visual Explained or MySQL Workbench, which, uh, which um, Christoph talked about earlier. The explain analyzer or Procona's QAN uh, or some other tool. If you have other tools that you use, it'd be interesting to know what they are. And maybe you can let us know in the uh, also in the question section or the control uh, the chat section of your control panel. So I just let this run for a few seconds. Um, and thanks for thanks for your feedback here. And then we'll still have um, some time to uh, to go through some of the questions you've been asking. Thanks very much. I'm just going to close this now and share the results. And if you have questions, of course, feel free to ask them as well. Um, so we, you know, like I said, we still have a few minutes to um, to go through them. I'll just close this now and uh, share the results. Uh, so it looks like most of you are using either explain um, the explain analyzer or MySQL Workbench um, and uh, some other as well. So it'd be nice to if you if you want to let us know what the other tools are. That'd be that'd be interesting. Um, Christoph, any comments on on this result? Yeah, I mean the explain is uh, pretty uh, pretty popular, which is somewhat expected. Um, that's a really different different story what, than what we have seen in the previous session. Like multiple users, I mean a lot of people use here uh, my school, but um, so yeah, I think that's that's nice that people use different tools to to, to get a better understanding of the queries. And uh, those who, who 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 use the other, uh, if you if you don't mind, just uh, saying what you use in the chat window, that would be really great. So, you know, I I would love to learn new 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 tools. Maybe that's that are better than what I'm using right now. Cool, uh, cool. Thanks, Christoph. So let's look at um let's look at some of the um, some of the questions. Uh, that you've been asking. I'll take, I'll take one very quickly because it's an easy one to, to answer and um, uh, Ranjit is uh, asking whether there be a recording of uh, today's webinar. So the answer to that is yes and we make it available in the next um, two days. Uh, so look out for a blog um, about that. So the recording will be live, um, will be online uh, within the next uh, couple of days. Um, but then in terms of um, other questions, um, there's a question here from Nisha who's asking how uh, how um, how to find out about um, maybe your top ten SQL queries? Is there is there a tool to find out about um, 
uh, what the top 10 queries are that someone should be looking at. Mm -hmm. um, um, so basically, if you are talking about the top 10 SQL queries, the uh, it's either it's either performance schema, uh, which is somewhat useful uh, with this regard. Or uh, what you can also do basically is um, use slow, you know, slow query log and, um, and use some tools to, to pass it like uh, APT Query Digest. So, you know, for more information, I would really recommend to take a look at our, the recording of our previous uh, uh, webinar in the series. Uh, hopefully you'll find it useful and maybe you'll, you know, it will, I mean, it should answer your questions. Great, thanks. And just related to this, I think um, slightly also from Nisha is um, a question: How to best find unused indexes? Is there is there a, you know, a particular way you recommend or a tool that can help um, you know find those indexes and yeah, then so, deal with them? Uh, yes. So basically, there are a um, couple of options. If you are running five point seven, uh, the I don't really recall exactly the name of the column, but uh, there is data in the performance schema. Uh, there is a weight. There's call. There's there's a table which contains the uh, I/O uh, I/O weights, weight events related to indexes. So you can query this. Uh, you can query this table and basically find uh, indexes which are to are not accessed at all. Um, also, if you're running per uh, Percona server, uh, you can. Uh, and and if you have user stats enabled, um, there is a table called index statistics. In, if I remember correctly, in a, a information schema, or or in MySQL schema, I don't recall frankly. But in one of those places, there is this there is this table which contains the information about the index statistics, and then you can easily find the indexes which are not uh, not used. And of course, uh, as I showed, uh, external tools like, for example, cluster control uh, can help you to, you know, to to, to find this data for you, like uh, for by parsing the performance schema, for example. Yeah, thanks, Christoph. And the link to cluster control is on your screen right now, so you can download cluster control um, for free and use it for free, you know, for deploying monitoring. Amongst other things, but if you go to our Getting Started page, that's where you can uh, go and download it and, and use it from there. Um, there's a question here on whether, and I'm not quite sure if, you know, uh, if I'm reading it right, but um, um, whether we follow normalization for all the tables within the schemas. Um, so, well, I mean, it is really up to you. Uh, it, it is not really something which you know, every application has its own requirements, and it is really hard to tell whether uh, your particular case will. I mean, ideally, you sh everything should be normalized, but then at some point, you probably will have to denormalize uh, and and just move some things around to make things you know faster. So basically, it, it's really hard to answer. Like, you have to normalize, or you should normalize. Maybe you should, but then again, everything depends on the application, on how you access the data, and uh, what actually works best for you. Makes sense. Um, thanks, thanks, Christoph. Um, there's a question here from Joseph, but I think Joseph, we might just uh, get back to you via email if that's okay, because it's kind of um, a complex question to be asking, you know, um, uh, with for everyone here. Um, and uh, so we do that maybe via email, if that's okay with you. You can email me at jj at com, but we should also be able to just uh, email you directly. Uh, so we've got your question there. And uh, then there's a question here from Tiago, uh, Christoph, and the question is on um, whether MySQL uses a double linked list in leaf pages or whether the links are in forward only. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in general, you can use, uh, I mean, Frankly, I don't know. I would have to check it. But given the fact that you can use uh, MySQL indexes to bot, uh, to sort the data both ways, like uh, ascending and descending order, 
I would say it's uh, these are the double linked lists. But to be honest, frankly, I I, I don't recall it, so I would I would have to I would have to double check it. But definitely, you can you can use index to scan um, the data one way or another. So probably you can do it both ways. Okay. Uh, great, thanks, Christoph. And I can see one last question here. I hope um, I hope I can you know, we, we can fill it back into the context. I think that's when we were disclo uh, discussing um, the where clause and you know different columns and so on. That's a question by uh, Sailesh, and he's asking or she asked he's asking whether um, what if a query has column two in the where clause? Uh, would the index be used in that case? Um, okay, so I will try to maybe answer this one and also the question from Joseph a little bit. Uh, so, so in general, you don't have to. I mean, if you are talking about the composite index, because I believe that what we are what what we are discussing right now, uh, if you have a composite index on, on the those three columns, column one, column two, column three, um, then basically, uh, as I said, what is going to be used is it can be used as long as you're using the left left most hand i mean the left left most prefix so if i'm using a column 1 for example or column 1 and column 2 or column 1 column 2 and column 3 um so in that case yes um this index can be used if i'm talking about if i'm looking for a column 2 only or column 2 and column 3 or column 3 only um the index won't be able to use. Uh, I mean, we 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 won't be able to use this index because we are lacking the column one. Again, if we are if we have a column one and column three in the where clause, then uh, we will be able to um, we will be able to use this index for a column one only. Column three will be basically used. I mean, of course, uh, you, you can use it in the condition, but then. The, the index won't be used there. It will be a uh, sort. I mean, the, the, the result set uh, based on the on the first index index lookup will have to be uh, searched again for the uh, for the second uh, second column. So I don't know if this answered both of your questions. I mean, uh, uh, Salish and Joseph. So I, I, if it doesn't, feel free to to read JJ at JJ at several dot com, and uh, we can like with some more context, and we can move further from that. Great, um, great, thanks, Christoph. Um, uh, yeah, and both uh, Sanesh and um, Joseph are saying that uh, that answered their, their question. So thanks, thanks, Christoph, and thanks um, both of you for confirming this. Uh, great, uh, perfect, thank you. Um, and I don't see any. I don't see any other questions now, so I guess we um, we've come to um, to the end of uh, of today's webinar. Uh, thanks everyone for your participation. Thanks, Costa, for the presentation. And um, you can see our contact details here st still if you need to if you want to contact us, you know, um, after the webinar. And um, feel free to do so. The third part of this trilogy will take place at the end of October, and we'll start sending invitations out for that, um, you know, in the next in the next couple of weeks. It's already online, so you can register already on our website. For the for part three of um, of this uh, trilogy of webinars, so we look forward to seeing you at the end of October at the latest um, for part three. If you uh, if you'd like to join us then, uh, but for now have a good rest of the day uh, and uh, a good week. Thanks again, Christoph, and um, thanks everyone for for your time today. Thanks and take care. Bye bye.